lot of questions here and I don't want us to take time. So I'll be, I'll be uh, combining some of the questions. So first, I want to ask uh, Mrs. Olisa. Someone is asking, can we drink Omiyogi first thing in the morning to keep us healthy? Yes or no, ma? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Water is very, very important. Okay. Omiyogi is a probiotic drink. Okay. We, in our own timetable of what to take, water. What people can ask is, can it be warm, can it be cold, can it be hot, can we add lemon? Plain water. Plain water. First thing in the morning. Body temperature. Okay. You can now do hot lemon water, like omiyogi or whatever. Later. Later. Okay. Later. So first because thing in the morning should those be those things are food. Ordinary water. They are food. Okay. But that water will help cleanse the, the body. body from the overnight activities. Because when we eat in the day, it is in the night the body will use it. Now the discards, the leftover, the dirt, that water will flush it out. So it should be water. Plain water. Thank you, ma. I hope the person that asked that question is around. So mommy here is asking me quantity. Okay. It's two to three cups. First in the morning. First in the morning. Okay. So what you should take in the morning is just water. And sorry, please. Okay, ma. That water also has time in it. When you wake up, immediately you wake up. Like, I feel power movement immediately I get up. I want to go to the toilet to wee or poo. Because I'm used to taking uh, the first water, even if it's going to be a cup. Even if it's going to be half a cup. Your kidney shouts. My kidney shouts for hmm. that water. Hmm. My kidney shouts. And it's not two, three. It's a cup or half cup. Hmm. But that's always within the first 30 minutes that you wow. get up. Hmm. Then after that one, you can now take the two, three okay. to flush. Okay. But your kidney always call for that water. Immediately you wake up. Wake you up. feel it. Yes, okay, within the, the first 30 If you minutes. don't give it that water, it will subside. Hmm. You okay. won't feel anything again, but it's always asking for it. And it's the most effective thing that cleanses the kidney. Thank you very much, ma. Okay, someone is. Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, so someone is asking again is it advisable to take honey at the age of 60 years? Okay. I am not diabetic. Uh, I'm not having any health challenge. I'm supposed to take my daily intake. Of whatever, like I want to take uh, coca oat or ghee or anything. You can take it without sugar, you can take it with your so called honey. But it's advisable to stop taking sugar, especially white sugar above 40. Okay. Children okay. can take sugar, they will work it out and they need it. So, honey is what is on your plate as you need it, and it's not about age. Okay, thank you, ma. Okay, so let me just ask all the questions. I don't want... Okay, so someone is asking that... Um, okay, the person heard that uh, our systems do not have the capacity to digest raw vegetables. She wants to know how true that statement is. Generally, generally. Generally, God created us wonderfully and fearfully. He made everything perfect and beautiful. Some of us, like our phone, you know there's what we call factory setting. Some of us tamper. We tamper with God, what God has set well for us. By certain things we take or when we take them. So if there's somebody whose system cannot tolerate vegetable, there's something wrong. 
and they may need to take some of those herbs and spices to build the colony of the bacteria that will put it back. Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, this another person is asking if it is good to take milk after 60 years. Milk. Just like sugar. Mm -hmm. Milk, animal milk. Milk, okay. Is out of our plates from 40, 50 and above. It should be out of our plate. White sugar, animal milk. We, if the person will take plant milk, uh -uh, even when you are 100, please take your milk, milk. but let it be plant Plant-based milk. milk, okay. So like tiger nut milk, yes. almond, uh -huh. almond, almond, milk. soya milk. Soya milk. milk. Okay, thank you, ma. Okay, so someone... Someone wants to know, uh, since you said tomatoes, uh, the seed is, and the skin is acidic, the person wants to uh, ask for a tip on how to remove the seed and the skin easily. Tomato <laughs> is one of the things, that, like water, that should be on our plate every day mm. because it's a powerful antioxidant. And it's readily available, cheap, economically, and even easily grown. Easily grown. Yeah, we are coming back to good value for tomatoes. Abi, shepi tomato in doja. Praise the Lord. So, when you get your tomatoes, there are two ways that I know that I practice. One is boil your water, then pour it in it. And for two minutes. After two minutes, you scoop it out and throw it into cold water. The skin will shrink, shrink and it will peel like eggshell. Okay. okay. Another way of peeling is store, if you want to use it tomorrow, buy and freeze up. At low temperature, at high temperature, the skin will always detach. So if you freeze it up and you bring it out and you throw it into water, the skin will also come out. Come out okay. Then when you, when you bring it out immediately, quickly cut. Okay. Into two. Okay. And scoop out the scoop. The, the seeds. seeds. Okay. So we do it like a process like that. But when you are scooping out the skin, I mean the seed, please take a container. Because that water that comes with the seed is the most important part. Is vitamin C. So don't lose the water. It's like it's like maggi. That water is like maggi to your soup. So don't lose it, then put in a sieve and just scrape out the seed okay. and you have your water. Okay. And you can use that water to blend it because it has a lot of water naturally. Yes. It's like you want to make a smooth um, um, watermelon uh, juice. Okay, juice. You know water from watermelon will blend it. Yes. So you won't need to add water. Okay. So if you don't want to add water to your tomatoes, you use that water to blend it. Thank you, Ma. Okay, there are still some questions for you, but I want to uh, pause for now. Dr. Ogumo Dede, someone wants to know, how do you solve your stress problem? If your stressor is your husband, one, then another person <laughs> asks, if your stressor is your sibling. Hmm. So... <coughs> Okay, so we are back to your sibling that has week. unrealistic expectations. expectations. Of you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now for those that have their major stressors as their spouses, number one, I empathize with you. It can be very, very difficult. But what I say many times is that when we have spouses that stress us, do we communicate with them that they stress us? If we communicate with them, how are we communicating? Sometimes our spouses do not even know that they are stressing us. They are just being themselves. Some of them, they are just, they have problems with personality already, but we have not confronted it. So communication is key first. And when we communicate, we are non-abrasive. Many women are abrasive communicators because 
we are emotional when we communicate. We just want to get everything across. You are doing this. You are doing this. So we get hungry. The ego of the man rises. And so he doesn't want to listen. There's a problem. But when we communicate, and we communicate in a, in a manner that is, well done, that is persuasive. So I usually say persuasive communication. Ah, my husband, I just want to talk about some things. I know that you are really trying. Now, many people will say that's a lie. Who told you that he's trying? But you want to, what you want to do is you want to service the ego because of the male psychology. If you don't service his ego, he will not listen. Oh, I know that you are trying. I appreciate the things that you have been doing. However, these are the things that are stressing me. And I'm, I find out that I cannot cope very well any longer. So that we don't have problems that we escalate. Let us work on this. And you just don't talk about the problem without preferring solutions. So, okay, I want you, if you can just be helping me a bit more. If you can tone down the way you speak. If you can encourage me more. Many people will say, my husband, I've, I've done that, my husband did not listen. Check your technique. Your technique of communication, check it. If you are truthful to yourself, you will find out that it is not persuasive enough. So if your husband is your stressor or your wife is your stressor, understand that communication will solve half of that problem. Another thing is to try to stimulate positive change in your spouse. So when you want to stimulate positive change in somebody, you model it. So you can't be saying, um, you know, I want you to mind the way you talk to me, but you are emotionally abusing your husband. You are not modeling that. He will never get it. So if you want to stimulate positive change, that will later serve you. You know it's, it's about you, but you are going the roundabout way. If your, the stressor is your sibling, then you can keep a little bit of emotional distance from that sibling that is stressing you. I usually tell people, if the sibling is living in your house, then you have to confront that behavior. You will have to confront the behavior. Please do not be afraid to confront negative behavior and address it with the wisdom of God. But if the person is not so close by, keep an emotional distance. I usually say it though, that one thing that is compulsory in life is salvation. Every other thing is an addendum including siblings sometimes. So if your sibling is your stressor constantly, ah, you'll be using style. Do the things you are meant to do, but don't be so emotionally involved in that person, or else you won't be able to help yourself. Praise the Lord. Have I answered yeah. the question? Yes, I think so. Okay, the next question, uh, Dr. Janet. Okay. Okay, th there are two questions that are related. So I will read the two, so you just help us. How do you develop ways or uh, strategies to recover debt from your debtors? So another person is asking that as a business, if somebody buy pants, brazier, or tight, up to 10,000 plus, and six months, over six months, the person has not paid, the person is a civil servant, how do you recover your money? The person does not want to pay me. <laughs> anyway, the first question. You see, in business, there are some debts we call bad debts. I have somebody owing me for 17 years. London, The first thing she said, Ambassador me, eh? I was not expecting. I was not expecting. I could not ask again. If I want to boom. I could not because for her to, that was the first thing. She first pretended as if she didn't see me. So I was telling my daughter that it's like, I know this woman. I cannot even say, ah, mommy, ah, ambassador, you're going to get you. 
So, though is it, that is it. Some people are just like that. In fact, some people, this loan or whatever we are talking about, before they even come to come and meet you, what in the mind? We just have terrible Benny. Some people are just, I don't know why some people are like that. The same thing in families. Mm. So what I used to tell people, if you know that you cannot give to Babe the 10,000, phone 2,000, because you can't collect the 10,000. If you go to the first time, you go to the first time, they say, meet in there. So sometimes you, then if you have done it for me once, it's a red flag. You can't come to me again for me to sell for yeah. credits. But you now see some people, oh, you sold again. Say, you have not learned your lessons. Mm. <laughs> so we have some people like that. Then just, if it's not too much, it is bad debt. Then if you know that this person intentionally, you want to rubbish the person. If the person is married, and you are close. No there could be a problem in the marriage before. Sorry, I used to tell people, one of That's the highest of it. Because most times there could be a problem on ground before. So you have added it. But maybe you know that person through somebody. And say the bamiba or any sorrow with style. She has to understand. And some people only back below talk. Because basically, not all along where you me. Oh, don't want to pay. Oh, I If some people bring out book for you, you what it get only part as the best you see pints, bra. Oh, let me throw on a fan woman. So, who want to pay? So, please, I've okay. answered the question. Then Thank you. you I, I think I've answered it too. Yes, you have. <laughs> Someone says, uh, the, the question is for you again. The person says, how. Oh, do you help a woman who wants to start a business or a school with a grant or a loan? The, the question is not straightforward. Because most times, that's why I, was, I differentiated the, the grants and the loan. Most times, Sherry from grants, you want to have a startups. Because you, have not, you are not able to show us the evidence of that business. So, you can finish up your startups. So you have to show us your track record. Let me put it that way. And if okay, you don't we don't know anything now. So that is why I said you have to start it up yourself. Build it to a level. Then assistant will now come. So like you went to that school learning, you can do it in such a way that maybe you already have some where those children is. Oh, like a crutch. So you want to, you now tell them to come and see it, but you just want a better structure. That is it. So that yeah, you can just pick it up from there. Okay. So, okay. In that case, assuming someone has um, started a business and the person mm -hmm. wants a grant, mm -hmm. who, uh, who will the person approach? Where will the person go? His information. So, okay. Why is that associate at the very one fair queen book well, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah so I don't want to even mention them. Don't even let me go there. Okay. In this government, I want get friends. One of the queen book well, Funtana. They eat up a fair bunny. Okay. So even if you hear and you go and meet them, to get to you, they're not bangwa. So, but if they already know they cannot get anything from you, they will not even want to tell you. So, okay. <laughs> so it is you too that you will not be fatty lonely. Okay. Say, go on, can can ask questions. That is why we have this. You know, sometimes some people don't know that when I post on things on my status or my group, I'm giving you information. I do not use all my mouth to say it so that they will not know that I'm giving you expo. Oh, but we are not attentive enough. So, so especially when you know that this person, I just don't send messages or share messages. So for me to share it, only come out like this. So look at it very well. Not the one that fits you. Okay. If it doesn't fit you, you have a sister that fits. Okay. If it doesn't, you have children that it fits. Yes. Okay. You have a neighbor. Right. If yes. you if you solve somebody's problem, your own problem, self. Yeah. So that is it, please. Thank you very much, Ma. This question is for Her Excellency. What advice can you give to women on how to balance their personal life and service to humanity? 
So you've been at the forefront of service to humanity. That's what, in fact, that's the way I know you. So how do you balance your personal life, family, and service? <laughs> it's tough for me to answer because the, the, the definition of uh, personal life, is it talking about maybe my family? Your family, yes, yourself, how you maybe having time for yourself, how you take care of yourself and things like that, how you balance it, yeah. I would say it's just by the grace of God, and I try to set my priorities. Okay. Like, my children are quite young, so while we were in office, there will be times you will not just see me, I have gone to stay with them, then I'll come back again, I'm all over doing the work, and you know, at that time, really, I don't. I, I would say I really have a personal life at that time because I was doing my ministry, which for me was everything. Then I was also because of the office, because of my husband. So, and I think I just enjoy what I'm doing. So, I God just helps me, Shad, to be able to balance it. Okay. Really looking at it myself, I can't because I go to the market a lot, so I don't even know how I'm able to. But somehow God helps you me well. to. But my children are my priorities as mm. well. Okay. So when it is time, when I'm with them, I stay with them and I try. Of course, there are times that there are struggles, but I'm very intentional. Okay. I'm very That's intentional. Good. And I try as much as possible to tell myself the truth. Then I listen. Because my children's school are brought, so they, they are kind of vocal. So there are times that they will say some things to me, as a Yoruba mother, it's an if Even if I scold them at that moment, when I'm alone, I will reprocess it, and I will try as much as possible to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I am very, very conscious about that. An intentional. Thank you very much, Ma. So being intentional is one way one can balance personal life and uh, service to humanity and even our jobs. But one thing I did, I must say, when I clocked 50, and after what happened to me, I told myself, Lewa, it is time to be selfish. Hmm. Even though it was, it was, it was a struggle. Hmm. But for this 2024, after I came out of that depression episode, I told myself, it's an intentional thing. Hmm. So I told myself, I'm changing a lot of things about myself. Hmm. I'm still going to be me, but I'm going to focus on me. Me. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Okay, so another question here, I think I've taken almost all. So, uh, Mrs. Olisa, someone says, since most of the vegetables and fruits we have today are planted with chemical, is it safe to eat them raw? Um, agriculture is greatly challenged. We are not planting enough. We don't have space for them. We don't have time for them. So many of them are coming from afar. And before they get here, they have lost value. Mm. That's why we had the Maggi. Mm. That's number one. Number two, I cannot really say. You see, it's our practice and culture to put fertilizer. But the awareness is increasing. Even in civil, that was why I was talking of tomato, not peel. You won't see it here. You won't know about it here. But we need to study far countries, developed countries, how they are doing it. They are now planting greenhouses, and they are particular about what goes into planting them. But our farmers, ancient farmers, they still plant the old way. So ignorantly, many of them are still using fertilizer. We just need to educate ourselves. But for now, they are bringing it to your antioxidants will help you remove the chemicals. That's when you eat a lot of them, for now. Thank you, Ma. Um, someone... Okay, so the other time when you were talking about nutrition, you said something about maybe enjoying optimal health. 75% of our food intake should be raw and 25% should be uh, cooked. So someone wants you to just expatiate a little on that. Okay, for me, my breakfast is water. 
I don't take breakfast as food. What I take is fruits and smoothie. My, if you check my bag, when I was coming, I have my plant milk and I have my smoothie. I was just finishing it on that seat <laughs> because I know my breakfast is on the go for today. Now, my real food starts 12 1, which is the all you can find on a breakfast tree cereals, uh, oats, coca oats, beans, my, my, even rice. And I put a lot of vegetable in it. So if you have a culture of this is how I eat, you will find that the cooked food will be scanty okay. at the end of the day. In the evening, I can just do soup. I can just take a big bowl of vegetable or salad or a wedu. A wedu te mine a whole family may share it. But mm. that's my own big bowl. Mm. My dear, you see. And I won't use the cup. Mm. I use a... Uh, um, baking soda. soda. Baking soda. Yeah. And so many things you have to be very deliberate. Yes, yes. yes. You have baking to be soda. very deliberate. Yeah, yeah okra. Ma. You don't need to come with okra. Hmm. And there's a way I cook it. If you see it, it's green. Till I finished eating it. Hmm. I put a lot of water and throw it in. Then when it cooks for two, three minutes, I will sieve it out. Because the seed is also acidic. The seed of the okra? Yes. So I throw away the water and I eat my okra, beautiful. And I eat a lot of it. So when you eat more vegetable, you find they are just parboiled, not cooked, not overcooked. Uh -huh. You find that what is cooked in your food is not much. Thank you, Ma. Okay, I think we have like maybe one, one question more. Um, this question is also for you, Ma, and the question is coming from me. I notice that sometimes there are conflicting information on the effect of some of the food we eat. For example, there was a time we heard that uh, eating eggs will cause bad cholesterol. There was a time we heard that meat is bad, and another time someone says you should eat meat is good for you. That's what, uh, what you should be eating most of the time. Then we also heard that sugar is the major cause of high blood pressure, not salt, as we have known for a long time. So there are conflicting information when it comes to the food meat. we eat and their effects. So I want you to just, from your own experience, you are the, someone who has walked that path. What has worked for you to uh, to, to recover from what you went through and to maintain uh, maximum health from that time. Okay, so let me take meat and egg. Okay. SAD, SAD, that governs uh, all this uh, WHO standardized food and intakes and all that, says above 50, you should take only two eggs per week. If you Google it, you'll find it there. But many of us will put crates of egg and Ola Lavinje will, will break four eggs and all for one plate. Yes. So if you take two eggs per week, like every other day you take one egg, you are fine. Because there's a level. It has hard, bad cholesterol when it is cooked, especially boiled egg. Now, even the way you cook your egg, there is poached egg, there is what egg you cook in water, there is egg you scramble with low heat that once it comes up, it's done. Don't pay love for it. Even egg. But many of us, we fry it. We fry it in fried oil. Or boil it hard. Boiled egg. And then we are eating it in dozens in a week. Almost everything is bald egg, bald egg, bald egg. That's one. I've had jendomi, I've had jebre, I've had everything. Any yini. So it can be too much, especially above 40, 50. Oh, no, I want no far. Postrate. The postrate will be high. Hmm. Then some of those things, your body doesn't need so much, they will just go and store up. 
and it will be waiting for tumor forming in the body and all that. One la tumor mafi surgery be jade. The same thing with hey, um, meat. We need meat, but only a kilo. If you Google it, if you ask Google, how much kilo of meat should I eat above 50? How for you? Only your pieces meat to your Kenyan jay. But many of us, we eat like drivers. You know how drivers eat? When they are driving, because of the energy, the stress, and the whatever they experience. Talk about the Yabuka. And the Akosi. Bankers do it. When they walked all day, but like Barry, what did they be shown? What car, what it is? Talk about daily one, they fried meat. But they are German and co fried meat, and it's colon cancer at the end of the day because the meat will not properly digest. It takes minimum 24 hours for meat to digest. So, about the vegetables in two hours, what it digest. But meat takes minimum 24 hours. So, in here, what it digest, it will be me. Then it comes, it becomes toxic. It becomes toxic. And toxicity is the, is the beginning of many sicknesses. Now, the meat now, then you're to one je, I need meat, but only quantity. Okay. Only quantity. So the same thing for salt. Ah, sodium ni minimum to gauge be sugar and honey that should be in the blood. It will start to cause a lot of problems. Thank you, ma. Please, ma, what can you do when you, when you start to sweat excessively after age 50 and above? Sweating excessively. excessively after 50. Ma? Okay, okay. So maybe the person is not aware. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so someone also is asking, what are the recommended supplements for women that are good? We have a lot of supplements. There are so many that you can just be confused. So what are the ones that maybe from personal experience you can uh, recommend? If you are eating balanced diet, you will need minimally supplements. So that's where we should start from. Many of our food are deficient of what should be on the plate. Now, if your work or stress or time you spend for yourself or care for yourself is minimal, then you need to do more supplementing, even to vitamin C. If I take a big cup, be related of immobiliary, of smoothie, of rainbow fruits, five different fruits every day, I may not need my vitamin C again. But just swallow one apple or something that is not enough, you must take your 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day. So what you take, what's your, what's your intake, will determine how much supplements you need and what type of supplements you need. Garlic is one now. It gives you your daily omega oil. And omega one is a powerful scavenging uh, element in the body. Garlic does not smell when you swallow it. You sweat, sweat. Yeah. Even your poopoo, -poo, even your urine. It will smell. It will be there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's a powerful antioxidant that helps to take many things. So some of those things still going back to take them raw, take them well, take them in a balanced form, you will need less supplements. Thank you very much, ma. And I think I've read somewhere where uh, they said this uh, moringa leaves has a lot of vitamin C ah. and a lot of other uh, many, many, vitamins. Many, many. So many, many. from there, we can get many of those things that we, we want. Good day, good day, my doctor, Busola Ogumode Day. Good day, my doctor Busola Ogumode Day. I need help urgently. How do I see you? Ah. <laughs> oh my. So answer the person here. After the after well, you can see me after the program. Yes. <laughs> ah, mm, mommy. 
<laughs> okay, so you can see Dr. Ogumo the day and after the program. The people that want to see me, I'm available. At least for the next one hour. Although I have somebody I must see. <laughs> I must see here today, today, today. immediately. So, but I have one hour. And I'll try to see as many people. I always try to safeguard my number. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Okay, so someone says, please, all our panelists should give us their contact so that we can read them when we need them as Dodi members. So, <laughs> so they're on social media. Social media. Okay, so. Okay, okay, so for, see, these are some of the things you enjoy when you belong to the Dodi Career and Business Women Group. When you're on that group, you have access to every member. You have access to every member. So if you are not a member yet, we enjoin you to join the mem I mean, to join the group. You can see the coordinators after this program. And last, last question here. I don't even know who will answer this question. <laughs> I don't know. The person says, please, ma, is it good to wash our vagina by dipping our finger inside to wash? I know the answer, but maybe, uh -huh. So, Dr. Janet, you answer the question. It's you that we answer that question. Question, yeah, Lord, yeah. Because <laughs> depending on what Exactly, because we have, um, as women, we have ways at which we wash before your period, after your period, during ovulation. You know, we have so many types of washing anyway. So I don't really, but to me, I don't, I, I, depending on what you want to wash, why you want to wash it inside like that, like that. So, okay. yes, you know, some people are not seeing some things. So, because even if you finish your period sometimes, some blood, oh man, ha, if you don't know, you think you are spotting, but you are not spotting. So, a for walk with daddy, no, and you stop. Oh, yeah, say you do the rest. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I think it, it, it boils down to uh, personal hygiene. Yes, and um, because on the finger, yes. You have microorganisms that you're not seeing part time. Mm -hmm. So I can say that my hands are clean, but are they really clean? So if you know you have vagina itching, please get to a doctor for treatment. Don't be that kind of a person that introduces all sorts of foreign bodies into the vagina. Another thing that people do is that they use a lot of soaps and all of that. They use it to wash the vagina. You are washing the normal microorganism, the normal flora that is there that's supposed to help. You are washing it away already. So, you know, wash cleanly with water and maintain personal hygiene, especially with underwears. Maintain personal hygiene, especially with underwear. That person that is talking about using something to, to is likely to have vagina itching. See a doctor because it could be a sign of a pelvic inflammatory disease. The fingernails. Yeah. I, I can see that. It's like all of us here, we are the real thing. I did not say you can't fix your nails, though, but there's no way you can fix that nail and wash your private parts. I can then you can't put sand. You you will enjoy yourself. So most times I didn't say it's not fine, no, but no, you'll be getting discharged none. Thank you very much for <laughs> for the answer. And I believe that they've answered the person's question. But what I would just want to add is that from what I've learned is that the vagina itself is self-cleansing. So you don't need to so if you have itching like uh doctor said then you need to see a doctor okay so uh -huh. so if it is older to just see a doctor and complain so that you can be treated 
uh, around there so it can be treated. Thank you very much.